Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Mia Hall, and I'm here with... I'm Gordy. What's going on, y'all? We're back in effect. Season 2 of Parables from the Projects podcast. What's going on, Pop? It's been a minute. How you doing? It's been a minute. It's been a definitely minute, man. It's way too long between between episodes. But we here. Wait, what's going on? So first, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out to our live podcast in Brooklyn. That was a time, wasn't it? That was a that was a really um, that was a parable in itself. She you, yeah. you, that wasn't even supposed to happen. That happened so big that we should close the whole show with that and be like, yo, if y'all don't understand what we're trying to say, I made it to the podcast live out of a hospital bed. <laughs> so so she let them know, um, let them know how big the po- the podcast is growing. Like so, I know we got we got our small circle. We got a big circle actually, but it's not as big as people listening. Hey, you gotta let them know that we got some we got some subscribers. How many we got? Yeah, what we doing? We yeah, living? we man, we we have over five hundred downloads. Woo! <laughs> yeah, we thank everybody that has been listening. Yeah, and supporting, man. Like, you know, we had a good fifty people at our live podcast show in BK. Um, you know, and just so many more people listening. So we thank each and every one of y'all, man. From five hundred to five thousand, we know we're gonna get there. Um, we just want to spread the good in the hood, man, and spread, you know what I mean? Faith, man, look. Faith, man, <laughs> you know? just, yo, don't die. <laughs> like, it's kind of hard dodging bullets. Like, somebody said at the live podcast, yeah, I, we was tired of just dodging bullets, you know, being on the bench, you know, have to duck and run. See, they said, Gordy used to come to the project and pick all the kids up and take them out of there for one day. This was special. And I never knew how popular it was. That's why I'm people, man, if you, if you, if you, Got a kid, and you, you just, just if they got a friend, grab their damn friend too. If you know their friend is out there, you know, whatever. But anyway, yeah, so it's good. It was really good, man. It was good to see all those faces. And even though, like, it was a, like a millennial crew there, like, I didn't even know about. Like, I've always met your friends, but there was so many of them there, and they just remember me. And I remember them. I was like, oh, sweat. It was nice, man. But we got a lot of people following. And we got to hurry up, y'all, because. Now everybody rich want to do a podcast. <laughs> you got to do a podcast. <laughs> they want to take over. Our <laughs> we mm-hmm. watch your movies. Like, like yo, we watch your movies, people. <laughs> Meek mm-hmm. Mills, he did. Everybody's on. on. <laughs> I can't mm-hmm. believe it. They got like 80 million followers and they still trying to. But anyway, let me, I digress. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm kind of pissed at stars. Like, yo, why y'all even. Yeah, like I feel like y'all coming down here to get us, but we're gonna make ours last with y'all support. Exactly. So later for that, tell your friend. Tell a friend and tell a friend, man. Later for that. Man, yes. Tell a friend, tell a friend. Yes. Make sure that you subscribe to our podcast, share with a friend or two or three, you know what I mean? Screenshot this joint wherever you're listening to it and share it on your I G stories, your Facebook stories, share it on Twitter. Um, yes, we love when you spread the love, and, you know, we got to tell more of our stories, man, so that's what we're doing. But, yeah, to to go back to the what's going on or what went on, man, I think I said a little bit of it on the last podcast, but, you know, just to let y'all know, when I went home, um, I knew that we were going to record the live podcast, but what I didn't know is that, you know, as soon as I got off the plane, my first stop would be to the hospital to see my dad and that he would be in there for for the the entire time that I was home until we shot the podcast on Monday, August 19th. So that was a, I mean, for me it was ups and downs, but I know that for you it was a, it was a whole different thing. So, you know. It was crazy. Because I definitely was canceling it. I was canceling that. And I thought that we should too. (laughs) You said, nah, you said 12 people bought tickets. I was like, what? We out. I thought it was just going to be like five people. It was going to be 50 people there. It yeah. was crazy. It was people crazy. really came up, showed up, showed out, bought T-shirts, man. Our Parables from the Projects T-shirts are available online now, parablesfromtheprojects.com forward slash shop. So make sure y'all get yours. But, yeah, man, man, that was that was dope. So we hope to come back to L.A. You know what I mean? We'll keep y'all updated on that date. 
you know, but 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 we we out here, man. I'm speaking it up. We got to hit the West Coast. What's happening in your life, Mia? Uh man, uh so <laughs> what's happening in my life? Um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting weekend, good weekend. I'm glad that we started the podcast again. Um, I am attending so many conferences uh in the next couple weeks. Went to the Revolt Music Conference, which I'm I mean, Summit, which I'm back at today. Um, went to the NABJ, National Association of Black Journalists Summit, yesterday. That was awesome. Got to see some old NBC peeps, Tracy Ryan, Charles. Um, you know, we all used to work at NBC together, so that um, that brought back some good memories. Um, congratulations to everybody who helped put that together. And, yeah, about to go see Issa Rae. <laughs> She's speaking at, speaking at 11.45 out here, so I'm about to go see her and Melina. Um, Matsukis, I think that's how you say her name. Um, and they got a panel on Black Hollywood that I'm about to go see. So, you know, definitely just thankful for this opportunity to be out here and, you know, be able to see these filmmakers and um, creators, really, that um, that I admire. So I'm about to go get some gems from them. <sighs> What's going on with you, Pop? Still trying to break in the – trying to get out of the comedy slump. <laughs> So last night I was supposed to go out and like I think I was supposed to get on stage last night and I didn't because so yeah it's a little crazy man how how things to try to block you so this is gonna be a parable when I do break through this is gonna be one of my one of my one of my um things that happen on this road to being the greatest comic ever <laughs> nah but um I um you know the, the the show was tonight I mean last night but. I didn't. I didn't really have a plan to go on last night, but I know I probably could have gotten on last night if I went because of the, my friend Brooklyn Mike. He he does. He hosts a show every month there. But um, you know, April and um, April oh. I went to Tanner's basketball game, and I was with April and the family. Her cousin was in town, so we hung out, and I just didn't even go. And I just woke up and I watched the craziest movie you would think when I mean I watched Dolomite um with Eddie mm. Murphy and it's just like it's not what people think it is. Like you're gonna think the story is one way and then then it's just a mad inspirational story about how somebody tell you no. You know, you just you just go with your gut. If mm. your gut is saying something, yeah, you go with your gut. Same thing. It's, it's like the same thing Dolomite did, man. We doing the same exact thing thing and then my boss she felt the she she really put me on to it, like how inspirational it was. So the biggest thing that really happened to me was like like we all the same no matter what level of, of education or what level of work you in. Like we, we some of us got the same thoughts and the same thing that inspired me inspires a CEO, you know? So parables that's that's the word of God. Like that's when you know something when it transcends like different cultures and different different um, backgrounds and stuff. Like, I'm a street kid, you know what I'm saying? But just being awoke on what's going on, like, like getting getting um, inspiration from everywhere. Like, sometimes you're going to need my, my biggest takeaway this month or these couple of since the last one was, like, it's going to be it's gonna be a war. It's going to be a war. You're going to need to be strong. Do some push-ups, people. If you're trying to make it, do some push-ups or something. Read some books. Whatever you feel is like a workout. Do it, because you're going to need it. You're going to need to speak. You're going to need to stand. You're going to need to get over some stuff. Friends, family, everybody's going to come at you. That's a fact. Push, the closer you push get, through them. I feel like the closer I get to my goals, like the the challenges become more challenging, but the highs, the victories become more, like, victorious. <laughs> like, the highs get bigger, but the lows get lower. Um so yeah, you definitely got to be prepared for everything. Got to be prepared for all of that, all of that. Okay. So we are going to have some special guests this season. Something that we're bringing to season two. Um, we had one guest last season, Rhonda Ron, and so now we're going to be incorporating more. And as promised at the live podcast, uh, my mom agreed to come on the next episode. Um, so we're about to bring her on. What's up, Audrey Hall? Hey, what's up? <laughs> what's up? Mom, how you doing today? I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you, good to have you on the podcast. Uh, so, you know, this is Parables from the Project, and um, 
And you know, when and I you first met you, are from the project. Yeah, and and when, or at least when I met you, you were um you know living in the projects when I was born. But then you moved out. So I guess I wanted to start with, you know, did you did you always know? Um, that you were one day going to leave the project? Um, well, actually, I didn't think about it like that. I Actually, I didn't have a choice. I couldn't apply for a project apartment because my mother wouldn't give me her income so I could fill out the application. <laughs> so I didn't have a choice but to get a regular apartment. And I couldn't even get Section 8. Nothing. I had to straight up talk to my landlord. Where the first place you moved? Jamaica, Queens. A studio apartment on a fourth floor walk up. Mhm. But when you grew up in Brownsville, um, I mean, y'all was y'all were living in what? Like a? It was kind of like a house or like a two family. Yeah, a two family house. I <laughs> hung out in a project. <laughs> <laughs> Because you have friends there, or what made you want to go hang out in the project? Yes, that's where everything was happening at in the project. All the excitement. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's where you met my father. Yeah, this is your father. Uh, <laughs> that's where your fine ass baby father was at. <laughs> and um, yeah. yeah, and one of the projects in Brownsville. Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, our date was in the first uh, project in the community center at Tilden Project. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, so the weirdest part about it is, yo, know, I don't think I wasn't even living in the, in Brownsville back then. I was just staying at Rock's house or Absa. Just wake up and just, yo, know, brush my but teeth I think and that's it. I think you was home for the weekend. Do you remember that? Yeah, I think I was home for a week, and I was living in a group home, right, right. And we went wow. to that party in Tilden Center. Wow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Growing up, so neither neither one of y'all was living in Brownsville, project, in the project in Brownsville. Both of y'all just wanted to be in there because that's where everything was happening. And then y'all found each other. Um, and then, Mom, so I know y'all found each other, you know, was just, one beautiful happy couple, and then had a baby, and and lived happily ever after. <laughs> but but what do you what do you think? Did you learn anything you feel like from from you know being around Brownsville and and you know even when you went to pink houses? Do you feel like you learned anything? Oh yeah, I I, I was I think I learned you know people live two different ways. It's either you can live the legit way or you can live a life of crime. So I stopped hanging out in Brownsville. And then I know that, you know, you went to, you said you went to school um, at Morgan, right, but then came home. Yeah, I went to LaGuardia first. Then I um, applied for Morgan. I went to Morgan for a semester or less than a semester (laughs) and came back home. Wound up taking classes here and there. This little training classes, which led to me getting permanent work because I temped first. I worked a lot of temporary jobs. And then it finally led to a permanent job at DC 37. Mm-hmm. So I know one thing, too, that you always um, implemented when I was growing up was books. And you always said that, you know, you made sure I had an educational toy. And I knew that I, you know, had all these VTEC you know, little computers before computers was out and things like that. Why was education um, important to you? Oh, well, at one of my temp jobs, I worked at a publishing company, and I met this man there that, you know, he told me, you know, I I guess he felt like he wanted to reach out to me and, you know, plant a seed, and he was like, whatever you do, do not ever stop reading. So I knew, you know, it was important, and I knew he was saying it to me as a black man to a young black girl, you know, like that's the way to go. So it was always, I just knew it was important, so I just tried to make sure you had those opportunities to learn. Mm. And what about for, like, you know, you and my dad were teenagers when y'all had me, um, and I don't know if he knew that you had a baby or if this was when you had a baby or not, but I feel like, you know, a lot of people get down on, on teenage parents and things like that. 
Would you have any, like, words of inspiration or insight that you have for, like, teenage moms today? Oh, well, especially if you have your mother or other family to help you out with the baby, you still can pursue dreams that you had before you actually had that child, you know, if you, uh, if you have people to help you out with the baby. But, yes, I mean, it, it's, it's a life-changing, you know, it changes a little bit. You can't do as many things as you did before you had one, but you still can accomplish goals and dreams that you had before you had the baby. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Dad, do you have any questions for your baby mother? Yeah, I got a question. How do you accept, like, say if your baby father didn't come around for six years, <laughs> how do you how do you deal? How did you deal with that? Like, like I didn't um. I didn't acknowledge me until I got out of jail the last time. So my last bid, not my first bid or the second bid, but um, the last time I went to jail, I came on. Well, I think I, I had started acknowledging it, but how did you deal with that shit? How did you not quit and be like, yo, later for this dude, this dude is just an uh, asshole, and, you know, he's the worst person in the world. How do you go from that to just being on, just being cool, like like we friends, I, I um. Yeah, it's a lot. We we friends. We we kind of like have accepted. I mean, even even when I got out, I came home and I just said, "Yo, sorry, whatever." And I said, "Yo, I want to see my daughter." And um, you just kind of like, "Yeah, okay." Like, how did you? How did that job make you feel? Like after all that time, now you want to be a dad, and you broke, and you just got out of jail, and now you want to be a dad. But anyway, how do you think? How do how, how do you get through that? Well, like I said, I had my mother to, you know, help me out with Mia. So it didn't interfere with what I was doing if you wanted to have a relationship with her. It's not like I had to take you to her or, you know, you can go see her yourself and things like that. So it didn't, you know, it didn't interfere with what I was doing. I think I I remember coming here, seeing you with her, and she was riding her bike or something like that. It's just, you know, I wasn't mad or angry, and I think partly because we were so young, you know, we were actually friends, you know, before we had a child, and I feel like we have more of a friendship than a relationship because we were so young <clears throat> that, you know, just figure if we broke up by the time we was 18, what did we really know about relationships? So we were really like friends. Yes. Yeah, so Aww. That's, that's, <laughs> That's, that's that's really nice, but a lot of other women would have like. So this is this is your this is this is what I believe is the God story, is because a lot of other women don't think like that. When they whatever gave you that, I don't think it just it just ain't it ain't a natural it ain't a a, a norm for women. Like when when dudes try to come back to their baby mother, they be like, hell no, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or or this is this is another crazy thing I never understood. Like. You, I, that day I came home and I, that like it, it was literally happened the weekend, like literally that week I came home. I was doing all this stuff and then I used to come take her, like you'd be like here, yeah. and I used to come take her and then like <laughs> it was crazy, man. And you just like accepted that shit. You was just like you ain't you ain't like you ain't never be like no mother effer. You did this back in the day <laughs> or none of this stuff. You know you kind of like just. I always feel like. Like, like once I got saved, like they say, you become a new creature. That I don't know. You looked at me a little different. You look, I like you. You knew I was telling the truth. Just you knew I wasn't going hustling. You knew when I said, you know, I'm a, I'm a, um, do the best I can for my kid. You knew some kind of way I meant it. And I was a lying mother freaking when we was dating. <laughs> and you know, mm-hmm. so it's kind of crazy that you just. It's kind of crazy how Mia turned out. Like, like how 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 it could have went left so easily. And just like so, so when you so when I came home, she was in pink houses. I met her in pink houses at the swing. So I mean, a uh, little jungle gym man, by two twenty four Park. Well, was was you living? Did you you were still living in pink houses when I in the nineties in in nineteen ninety specifically? Yeah. Yeah. And wow, and you I guess, moved to Queens. I yeah, always wonder. I always wonder. Wait, wait. Yeah. You moved into that apartment building first, or that no? First you. Wait, which one you moved in first? Because that was crazy because the school was so good. And I don't even know if you, 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 you researched the school. Nope. Nope. This right. living so, on my means. 
Yep, living <laughs> beyond said, your well, means. I like this neighborhood. I think I Until will. That, yeah. You don't feel like that, Mia. That's what I think. Your moms don't even. She she don't even catch. Like, how the hell did you do that? That that apartment in Queens you had probably was more than anybody our mothers ever paid rent, and you was holding it down. Yeah. And I ain't never I seen no anything like you was living with a dude, and then it was just you and Mia. It's crazy and Tammy, yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah, the, I just that was God because. Just, you know, things yeah. just kept lining up and lining up, you know, from one place to That's the other. That's what we want to hear. That's it, yeah. So it's just, it's, yeah. there's That's nothing crazy. like God. And then I used to come to see me out there. I was like, how the hell you move to this neighborhood? Because this neighborhood don't even, <laughs> like, we, like, like let's, let's get the story right. We both did live in the project. So just that when we met, like, I was in a group home from Pink Houses. To then I moved to Flatbush and then I went to a group home, but we both literally grew up in the project. So, and um, and where where Wendy used to live is um Osborne, and it's right across across the street from like Plaza, and it's right down the block from Brownsville. So, but but the story is crazy that that Mia got to live this life in Queens, and she was supposed to. She kind of grew up in the hood, like she's six years old. Back then, right, you kind of know you 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 get them. You kind of know, like, yeah, I'm Project something. Project me is going to be. Yeah, I grew up around crackheads and good yeah. at night. Or... People shoot, yeah. and, you know, and y'all lived on the yeah. first floor. That shit had to be scary as a motherfucking pink houses. Damn. Uh, you hear everything on the first floor, yeah. So, and another thing, me, so the crazy Bible old thing about, like, how did Wendy, so how did, so even even with me going to two twenty four, which I graduated from two twenty four in the seventies, like so and Wendy really a Brownsville girl that was that was in pink houses. Like I don't remember your when your mom's moved to pink houses. She must have moved to pink houses from Osborne. Yeah, from Osborne. Yeah, that's crazy. I remember see I remember coming to Osborne apartment. Yeah, that's some pictures your sister used to be like a photographer or something. Or we can't forget yeah. Sweepy up in the building. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Okay. You remember your family? Cause, and look, and this another thing. Your family didn't. Your, now, now you was cool with me coming home and being like, "Yo, me and me is gonna be hanging out." Like your family wasn't cool. But I, I, I gotta say, when another godly thing is like, I really won over your your mother. She loves me by the time you know, you know what I'm saying. She was in love with me by the time I, I you know, I changed. I really did change. Like, cause they couldn't stand me. Sleepy, your moms and Harry, they, they didn't, they couldn't, they hated me. Word. But yeah. then it's like, yo, nigga kept coming around. Nigga was honest. Nigga really did it. But I didn't do it. That's what I'm saying. That's why I was it had to be God, cause that wasn't me. But so my my, I always tell people this, and I know now now it's on a podcast. But I always tell people this. They could say what they want about Wendy, but Wendy has never has never taken me to court, has never, you know, denied me to see my daughter. And it's like, who are you? Like, because any other baby mother would have been like, fuck that dude. I'm sorry, Gabby, but um, that came out. <laughs> but any other dude, yeah. any other lady, any other, any other, any other baby mother, and especially back then, right, Wendy, you remember how many dudes, man, they, how many people went to court within, within, within child support cases and, I never gave you no money, and even when I came home, I didn't give you no money. So, what made you just be like, freak it? Something about this dude. Because the dancer well, wasn't I, I, my had love. A, I had a job, you know, and I I was able to do, you know, for her, supplementing my income here and there. Yeah, but that's crazy. It's still crazy. I'm telling you, people going to hear this part and be like, what? <laughs> people going to be like, what? Yeah, Wendy's a hero in this motherfucker, too, man. But that. <laughs> Oh, and and mom, so I I know too, like your story of faith is an interesting one too. Like like I know even my story, I mean, like I I started coming to C C C because my father used to bring me and I didn't always like people might think I grew up in church, but I didn't really like grow up in church like that. Like we went to Catholic church sometimes, but you know, I was in the laundromat with you when the Knicks lost the championship and I and I was like did I tell you that I thought that I didn't believe in God? Or was that just an internal thought? That, no, I think you said it on a podcast. Maybe. I don't remember I you saying you it to me. It. No. Right. Well, I don't, I, I oh, you said to mother, that's, right? That's, yeah, I think I was just thinking it in my head. And I probably only thought it, you know, like I said, for like three days. 
and uh, and then just woke up one day and was like, you know, I need to go to another church. And that's when I think I started that. Well, that's when I know I started going to CCC, but I think I started staying at grandma's house so that I could be closer on the weekends to go to CCC. And that's when I started going there. So what made you, but, but when did you, when do you feel like you came to know God for yourself? Cause I remember it was a time where you really started going, you know what I mean? To CCC and started going consistently. Like how, how do you feel like that happened? Well, probably was when you came home from Hampton and, you know, it was just me and you and you would go all the time and, you know, say, oh, do you want to go? And if I said no, you would just go by yourself. You didn't care. But then I just said, you know, let me go with her. And then I just started going with you and going with you and listening to the word and, you know, and it just, something just happened. Yeah. I I just remember going and saying, oh, I like this pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Right, and then we started going together. Yeah, but it was just you always asking me to go and go, you know, and then sometimes I went in and then, then when I did go, you know, I found that I, I liked it. Something just happened, you know. You know, you got to come back. We got to we gotta get, so listen, Mia, now I'm, my mind is going crazy. You got We got to come back. We got to have um, Miss Hall, <laughs> Wendy, my baby mama, back on the podcast one day because we got to talk about because uh, people don't want to know. Like, So we did have a little relationship. They don't know some of the fun stuff we did. We did do some stuff. Like, I mean, we, we did hang out. We went to some clubs, went to some parties. We did some. We had some. We had some times, you know. We had some time. Right. So. And I always look back at our relationship like it was a really a friendship. Yeah. I wish you would quit saying that because I don't. <laughs> nah. <laughs> well, yo, me and her, look, so I'm running around thinking I got a girl. And she like, oh, this, I'm telling people Wendy, my girl. And she running around telling me, nah, nah, boy, he's just a good, he's just a good friend. Like, she always, that, always say that. I didn't say that to people. <laughs> No, no, I'm saying you didn't say it, but I'm like, I'm making a joke out of it now. Like, I'm like, in your mind, like, this is dudes, this is all guys anyway. A lot of dudes always think that you're the motherfucking, no, you're not, you're not my man, nigga. You're just a friend, nigga. You can go ahead and think <laughs> what you want to think. Yo, no, no I just funny, really bro. felt, not that I back. said it, but I felt. Yeah, whatever. I just felt like. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. You 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 stressing that for you said that three times on this podcast. You say it one more time, I'm cutting this phone off now. <laughs> Yo, he was no, you was my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, but that's the most important part of a relationship, the friendship. No, I know. I'm joking. Way. I'm joking, Miss Audrey. We was friends because we definitely was going up town. We definitely had rock. Cripple Mike, remember the remember the remember the famous moment on the train with the guy with the medallion. I took it off his neck, and you was like, "Yeah." So we had some time. Rock had to fight. Remember me, you, yep, Rose, Rock. Yep, and yep. Boo. So we had some yep. time. We had some dangerous times. We had some good times. Mm. If they could find all the yep. pictures, we could tell all our story because we went. We had some flicks. Yeah. But when you so that's all it is. So just next. So when we bring you back on. Did you get a little loose? You can get a little loose. You get a little loose. Right and talk about how you would tell me to run and stuff like that. Hell yeah! Like yo, I just think the parable part and the parable part that um you can't deny. None of us can. None of us can deny the fact that it was really strange for you to let me back into this girl's life, and it was. I understood why Mia would, because I'm a father. I was a father that. And you know, dads, we we just some kids we can't do no wrong, and um, and I I don't I don't I don't take pride in this shit because I was a deadbeat ass dad. But but what I'm trying to say is that uh, we gotta let the people know that you could write your your miracles. The miracles are happening as you as you live your life, and you just gotta just step back, get off of your own self, and just, just stop saying yeah I did everything on my own, and just really look at your life and be like, wait a minute, I was living in pink houses with this little girl, my, with my grandmother and my aunt, I mean with my sister. I, and um, I was raising this little girl like that. And then I got to be, I got this apartment in Queens where she went to, and then your daughter was going to 224, then moved to Queens. She was going to this school where y'all did, you know, when I used to come to the plays, I used to think it was like a Broadway production. 
And and then then one time I think I went on open school night for Mia, and all the teachers looked at me like they wanted to curse me out. Like, how did you get her in that school? And then I remember, yeah, I just remember her being in the best schools. And I, and if you if you talk to people, if you talk to real the people that really that really um you know they they mother and father together, they really plan out their neighborhood come um in in order how they're going to raise their kid and what, what school their kids. So they research schools. If this is a good school, then I'm going to move in this neighborhood to put my kid in this school. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if I learned that money. after. Right, after. That's what, that's what I'm saying. It's, <laughs> your, your moves wasn't your moves. <laughs> right, right, your moves wasn't your moves. It was all, it was all. And I know people going to try to be like, oh, but Gordy, you putting it in there. No, motherfucker, the story, we ain't changing nothing in the story. This is a life. We on the phone together. This is what happened. We ain't exaggerating the story. We ain't, we ain't, we ain't, you know what I'm saying? This is exactly what happened. Like, she did not know right. she was moving these apartments, and she would have been in a project if if Mama Love would have gave her, uh, her her information. And it's not like I made a lot of money. I, like I said, things just lined up for me, you know, so it wasn't nothing but God saying, you know, open this door for her. Amen. All right, well, Mom, thank you for joining us on Parables from the Project. Can't wait to get you, you back on, Wendy. The, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Yes, thank you, Mommy. You're welcome. You're welcome. welcome. Okay, until next time. <laughs> All right. We're so look, this is out. So now we can do the funny part about this, y'all. So y'all, now we finally got Wendy to get on and talk. Because before she got on, she couldn't even get on. She what? I don't know. What's that? No, she just tell the truth. <laughs> Words. She, ain't, she don't even understand. Look how powerful that came out. She's like, it was no, good. I'm, oh, I'm, glad that, I'm glad that we had her on. I'm glad that we did it. Love, Mama Love, for show. Okay, so now we're in the portion of the show where we like to honor um, a person of the day. So, you know, today we are honoring multiple people. Miss Harris, Miss Farm, Miss Cooper, Miss Young, Miss Holloway, Miss Rory's mom, and um, even though she she's a later version, that was way after I changed. I met her. I never met Mike's mom. Uwe mother let me stay with her. Uwe pops didn't let me stay there, but he was cool as hell. And he and I used to sneak in the house and sleep. Funny thing, all of my friends had the bed that pull up from under. Yep, so yep. Was, we all had that bed. I was, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that that. Corny ass spring bed. <laughs> but I would sneak in the house and we would just open we would sneak me in the house at night. I sleep there and he'd be like, Yo, you gotta be out early in the morning, you know my pops and trip. Mm. Yo, um so Mr. Fagan definitely shout out. Hey, who else smoked? I mean, I don't anyway, we'll be doing this job. I'll be plugging as I remember. That's my party people for this podcast. Okay, so that wraps up another episode, the first episode of season two of Parables from the Project. This has been Mia. Gorgeous Gordy from Brownsville. Never ran, uh-huh. but now sometimes will. <laughs> Yes, so we thank you, like we said, for your time. We thank you for listening. And we want you to share this episode with two or three friends. Press that share button. If you haven't left us a review, please, please make sure that you go on iTunes and leave us a review. We are going to see you next time on Parables from the Projects podcast. Peace. Peace and love. <laughs> and so. <laughs> And so give somebody a hug too, y'all. Hug somebody, man. Not anybody though. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs>